14th attack in two hours. Gallagher, this one will have to abort. Pilot the navigator. We are heading back to England. We'll drop our bombs in the channel. Navigator to pilot. Heading 276, sir. Understand 276. Fire flares. We're turning around. Roger. <laughs> Wouldn't be turning back if they didn't have an impossible situation up there. All right. Operator, put me through to wing headquarters, General Britt, and scramble it. Colonel, General Britt's here. Cancel that call. General, I was just calling you. Captain Bates show up yet? Captain Bates? Bates, the new weather officer. Weather. Sir, I'm afraid we pulled a big boner today. What happened? You recall what our weather section promised us for the raid on Kiel today? Five tenths cloud cover, intermittent visibility over the target. Yes, sir, but they were just a bit inaccurate. It happened to be total cloud cover. Here's an in-flight report from my group. Couldn't see the target, couldn't bomb. Losses bad? Whatever they were, they were for nothing. Sir, Keel was just too far to fly without being sure of the weather. Got to knock out those yards. Yes. Well, a few more tries like today with this half-baked weather guesswork. And it'll do what the Luftwaffe couldn't do. It's going to knock out our striking force. We may be taking some of the guesswork out of it, Joe. This uh, new weather expert, Captain Bates, came out to meet with us. Due here now, as a matter of fact. Another expert? Just came over from Washington. Meteorological professor at UIT. They're studying new techniques. Well, if he just gets rid of the old technique, it may help. Captain Bates is here, sir. All right, Harvey, send him in. It isn't only just the weather, Joe. We're feeling our way in almost every area. I realize that, sir, but I hope we're not going to hang ourselves with more of this theoretical nonsense. Captain Bates, Colonel Gallagher. He uh, wasn't expecting a woman. Why not, sir? We're very clever at theoretical nonsense. If you're going to throw me out, sir, get a good grip. Captain, your arrival is well timed. My mission is on its way back. We'll have a chance to see what a bad weather forecast can do to a pretty good bomb group. Clock High, a QM production, starring Paul Burke, also starring Chris Robinson and Frank Overton, with guest stars Dina Merrill, Andrew Duggan. Tonight's episode, Which Way the Wind Blows. systems don't just bounce around the heavens willy-nilly. They develop into lines, fronts, and patterns that move in a definite direction and develop measurable forces. Does Colonel Gallagher get me communications? 
and conditions. Headquarters, Major Stovall. Ask Gallagher, any word? Well, code a message to Fitzsimmons and ask for an ETA. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, he is. Just a moment, sir. Uh, General, it's General Pritchard. Excuse me, Captain. Uh, let me know right away, will you? Yes, sir. Well, no, sir, as far as we're able to guess, they're about 15 minutes late. Well, headwinds, and they had to find a place to jettison their bomb load. Yes, sir, I'll let you know as soon as I hear. Sergeant Kamansky? Yes, sir. Get my jeep. I'm going to sweat this out in the tower. Yes, sir. Joe, uh, Colonel. I don't think the captain had quite made her point. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm only a captain, sir. I don't require an apology. Well, I, I didn't attend one. Uh, would you like to join me at the tower? Perhaps you could brief me further on the kind of work you do. Unless that's an order, sir. I have some uh, theoretical work to do. Uh, no, it isn't an order, Captain. You go ahead with your work. Perhaps later on tonight you can give us some answers over a uh, theoretical dinner. Yes. Uh, why don't you meet at the Star and Bottle? I'll join you for a drink. Fine. Thank you, General. Captain, see you at dinner. Sir, is he trying to shut me up by being charming? Captain, we are conditioned to think of the weather as an enemy. And a woman as something to be taken to dinner and chatted with? You're a woman on a man's assignment. Now, don't be naive about the handicaps. Right. If I have to prove I'm a scientist, it won't be the first time. A group was under heavy fighter attack for almost five hours. They couldn't even take a base of action, or they would have run out of gas. How was the flak? The flak was minimal, but what's the difference? I lost seven aircraft. Seventy men. The big problem is, as I see it, the Luftwaffe has first-hand information of their own local weather conditions. They were operating at their absolute best. They had a field day. We were at our worst. There's just some way we could more accurately know about weather in advance. Here she comes. Good evening. This is my assistant, Lieutenant Rogers. Good evening, sir. Lieutenant. I thought perhaps if he would nod occasionally, it might give some additional weight to my... Um, Theoretical nonsense. <laughs> Actually, sir, uh, we've given up our crystal ball. What is becoming a science? We've been studying the keel problem. I think we've come up with some answers for you. Captain, I wonder if you could hold those answers in abeyance for a while, at least until after dinner. Colonel Gallagher lost seven aircraft. But planes can be replaced, can't they? They're building so many nowadays. Captain, how would you like to come back to my base and study the problem at my level? In my hospital, my casualty reports. There are ten men in every one of those aircraft that I send up. Excuse me, I'll get us some fresh drinks. Isn't that rather uncalled for, sir? Son, I'm going to have to send him back to Kiel, and he knows it. The Nazi Navy Yards can send their North Fleet in action against our convoys, costing us who knows how much. Every day we wait. Men, supplies, ships at sea. Well, maybe we could work more effectively with some other outfit. Your assignment is to help solve this problem. Gallagher won't let go until it is solved. Is it that much pride? Not pride. Responsibility. Whoever goes after Q is going to take a frightful beating. Gallagher won't step out because that's the kind of a buck a man like that does not pass. Excuse me. Colonel, that was a thoughtless remark. I just don't understand war. Maybe that's more important than your not understanding weather. Captain, I was rude. I'm sorry. Still no apologies needed. Thank you. We'll keep it. Thank you. Bartender. Would you take these two drinks to those two very thirsty gentlemen over there?
You know, I really do have a new approach. Oh? Well, I was just getting used to the old one. When you decide to be charming, you're very good at it. I hope I've thrown you off base, because next I'm going to ask you to come fly with me tomorrow. Fly with you? It's part of the new approach. You know, we used to just sit and wait for reports on winds and pressure systems, but now we go out and look for them. I don't understand. Uh, what do you fly in? A special B-17 outfitted for weather reconnaissance. I'm going to find a better route to Kiel for you. Good. Well, here's to the better route. And uh, to that new approach of yours. guns are the only ones we have. Keep that in mind. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Normally, in this part of the world, weather fronts move from west to east. Now, I think we have one that's going in a different direction. More or less from north to south. Well, what do you do if you find it? Measure it. How high it is, how wide, how fast it's going. We have some special radar here in the nose. Would you like to see it? It's fine. into that. You'd lose them all in collisions. And you certainly can't fly over it. Neither can fighters. Now all we've got to do is figure out what time that storm's going to hit Kiel. And how you can strike while it keeps their fighters on the ground. Top turret to crew. Fighters at 7 o'clock high. Thank <laughs> you. 
1 to Archbury Tower. Weather 1 to Archbury Tower, over. Archbury Tower to Weather 1, over. This is Weather 1. Emergency traffic. We've got two rough running engines. We can't get the landing gear down. Also wounded aboard. Request instructions, over. Roger. Stand by, Weather 1. I'll take her in if you like. Wheels up. Colonel, that happened to be my first taste of combat back there. This will be my third belly landing. All right, Captain. Archbury Tower to Weather 1, over. This is Weather 1, go ahead. Archbury Tower, runway 03, runway 03. Wind southeast 11 knots, wind southeast 11 knots, acknowledge. Roger. Runway 03, that's the same one you used this morning, so take the same approach. Captain Bates, I want you to get back to the radio compartment. Romansky, secure that wounded officer, then tell the co-pilot to come up here. I want him to help the captain with this landing. Roger, sir. Rogers to the hospital. They feel his chances are very good. We'll give him all the help we can. I still can't believe that it happened. General Britt's waiting for a report. Do you feel up to it? Oh, I can't, Joe. Pat, time's important. No, I, I can't. Captain, you stay with him. Let him know how he's feeling. So in simple language, the mission came to nothing. Oh, I can't exactly say that, sir, because I don't know how to analyze cloud banks. Did you see a cloud bank? Yes, from a distance. As a matter of fact, she said it was the weather front she had predicted. That's about when the fighters hit us. Joe, I have less than 12 hours to make a decision about the next raid on Kiel. I have to have something to base it on. I'll take an educated guess from her. Where is she? May I use your phone, General? Sure. That's Colonel Gallagher. Would you put me through to Major Harvey Stovall, the 918th? General, what about going back up there again tomorrow? In water, plane was demolished. Well, she could use another one. She could get up there early enough to plot the storm and be back by 1300. All right, but I want her here by 12. Hello. Who? Kamansky. Well, I thought you brought Captain Bates to wing headquarters. Oh, I see. All right. What is it? She has rooms in Archbury. Sergeant Kamansky dropped her there about an hour ago. She was told to come here. All right, you find her. You tell her she's flying that mission tomorrow. Make it an order. Yes, sir. 
General, she's new to this, and she has had a bad day. Your attitude toward her has changed. So has yours, General. She came here with strikes against her. I was trying to smooth away. But she's here to help out on the keel problem. We all obey orders, Joe. All of us. Yes, sir. Activity this afternoon, huh? Yeah, nuisance raid on the factory in Notting Hill, sir. No trouble either. Can I open, sir? Oh, no, thank you. I was just looking for someone. Very much by going AWOL, do you? How about buying me a drink? Joe, I don't really want any company. Well, I'm afraid my presence is somewhat official. Look, Joe, I'm going to ask for a transfer. I'm going home. Well, me too, when the war's over. I just can't do this job. You volunteered to wear that uniform, did you? Yes. Oh, yes. I was even glad for the war, for the, the way it got us into high gear, the surge of progress. You know, it's a wonderful thing in my tight little world of theory and speculation, when important people come to you open-handed with vital problems, magnificent challenges. This isn't progress. What happened to Rogers today? What nearly happened to all of us? You know, I used to love the sky. But now the sky seems dirty to me. It is. We're trying to clean it up. How, by sending boys up there to die? What do you think I'm talking about? Trying to save as many men as we possibly can. Look, Pat, day after tomorrow I have to bomb the yards at Kiel. Oh, no. I didn't even turn in my report. Then I'll just have to depend on my own weather section. No, you can't. Not this time. How can they advise you when I can't even advise them? Nobody knows what that storm will do. You might just run right smack into it like some great tidal wave. But you said you had an idea of being able to use it. Now, why don't we go up again and try? No. Look, Joe, you're not just asking me for a simple scientific analysis. You are asking me to participate in sending men to die. And I can't. Now, maybe it has to be done. Maybe you can do it, but I cannot. Oh, Pat, it's too late. You're already involved in this. You, you can't now not participate. You say you made a decision to quit. Well, that's no decision. You're running away, and that's going to haunt you. You talk about sending men up to die. What, what about the men you might save? Stop it! You have no right to make that my responsibility. I won't accept it. And who are you, Pat? And who gave you the power to reject it? This military way of doing things is, is so new to me. I, well, I don't quite know how to say this, but I must find some other way, some other place to do my work. It's been almost 24 years since I was shot down by a, a German fighter. I think I know the way you feel after what happened today. But, Captain, this, uh, this particular job isn't finished, is it? No, sir. I think you'll have to go up there again. I didn't manage to get enough information. I guess Colonel Gallagher told you. Colonel Gallagher was told to order you up there again. He was what? He was told to find you and give you an order. Give me the 918th. I want to speak to Colonel Gallagher. I'm in. Pat. Why didn't you tell me I was ordered to fly that mission? 
Well, you heard General Britt's other end of our telephone conversation. I just didn't think you were in any condition to fly, mentally or physically. But you didn't even give me a chance. What do you think we were talking about in the pub? War, bombing Kiel, boys dying. Not about flying a weather mission. Not about you sending somebody up to do my job for me. Your weatherman hasn't got a clue what I was looking for or how to find it. Oh, I grant you that in spades. So what were you doing then? Indulging your protective instinct? Yes, exactly that. Well, I resent that. I can't reject the war. You're right about that. But I do resent your efforts to cover my weaknesses for me. I resent your protection. Pat, I wasn't protecting you. I was protecting my own group. When I met you in the pub and later in your apartment, you were still in shock. And I can't speculate with anyone who's emotionally upset. Oh, yes, I send men out to die. But the only possible way I can is with a calm and rational preparation to make it mean something. Now, that's more important to me than any individual. It has to be, man or woman. Pat. You told General Bridge you wanted to fly this mission. Why? Because if something happened up there tomorrow, and some young man died in my place, I couldn't live with myself. Pat, every man dies in his own time and place. Your time will come. Does that frighten you? Of course it frightens me. It'd be silly to say it didn't. But it's my job, Joe. I want to do it. Tell my weather officer he's standing down tomorrow. Captain Bates is going to fly the mission.
storm is. Check with ASC Rescue again. See if there's any word. I'll hold on. I said 1,200, Joe. It's 1,330. I can't wait any longer. It's not going to work. Sir, my weather officer has all the information she radioed back. I know. The weather section wing intercepted it. It's not enough, and it doesn't tie together. It was a valiant effort. But... Yes. Yes? I see. Thank you. Sorry, Joe. Uh, General, if there's any chance of rescuing her, I'm sure that she will have all the final details that we need. Well, one thing she has confirmed, there is a storm out there, and it's much too much for us to fly into. The mission for tomorrow is canceled. Stand down and wait for clear weather. That's all we can do. Yes, sir. Oh, Harvey, stay in touch with ASC Rescue and keep me informed, will you? Yes, Joe. assemble the crew. What are you going to do, Joe? I'm going to join the search. I guess General Britt was right to scrub the keel mission, but I can't scrub Captain Bates or the people I sent her up with. Rescue. Dog yoke 48 to Dog Zebra 49. Army 713 out. Why is it going to last long down there? The water must be freezing. You know it. Keep your eye open for other search craft. Yes, sir. Got it. Left waist. 
Thank you for your 2020 vision. Army 713 to rescue 20. Come in, please. Rescue 2-0, this is Army 713. How many survivors do you have? Over. Rescue 2-0 to Army 713. Two in this raft. We'll get identifications. Stand by. Must have come down hard. Rescue 2-0 to Army 713. We have an injured gunner, Farley, and a Captain Bates. She'll talk to you. Please stand by. I'm Farley, belly gunner. your reports, but we couldn't add them up. So I want you to tie them together for me. Well, this whole thing goes for nothing. Over. All right, Army 713. I forgot for a minute why I was here. Just stand by and like find some kind of a map. Pilot to radio. I want you to encode a message to Osbury Control, Major Stovall. Tell him I want the group on standby alert. We may go to Kiel tomorrow morning after all. lay on a mission without my knowledge? General, the only reason I asked you to come here, sir, is because I did not have time to go to you. And you want me to jump into this on the strength of your guesswork? I'm begging the General's pardon, sir, but it was you who persuaded me. You said it was scientific. From you, it's guesswork. When Captain Bates gets back, I'll listen to her. I'm sorry, sir, but they went to pick up the rest of the survivors and drop them off in Scotland. She won't be back in time. And you're willing to gamble this on the basis of a radio conversation with her? General... I have combined what she transmitted before they ditched with what she told me during our radio conversation. I now know the speed and direction of the storm, its tailwinds, its crosswinds, its ceilings, its temperature. All right. How do you put it to use? Sir, I thought we'd go north, hook around, pick up the tailwinds and ride it in. Now, she said the storm would hit Kiel at 0600 and pass by noon, and that'll keep their fighters grounded and jam their radar. Now, I thought I would adjust my takeoff time to come in just behind the storm. Now, I could be bombing before they'd even know I was there. They'd never know it hit them. All right. My weather section confirms your calculations. I'll approve it. Thank you, sir. Navigator to pilot. Our corrected ground speed is 350 miles an hour, sir. Man, look at that airspeed. Can you believe that? Well, the lady promised us a tailwind. She sure did. 
Bob, someday you can tell your grandchildren you once flew a 160-mile-an-hour airplane at 350. And they probably won't know the difference anyway. Can't be correct, sir. Just can't. You'll be catching up to the storm. It may not be accurate, Sandy, but it's fun. This is where she said to leave it. We're going to start our descent. By the time we get down, we should be over keel. Sandy, fire those flares. Yes, Take sir. it up to your turret. Pilot to Bombardier, PDI Senate. It's all yours. Make it good. Bombardier, Roger. Bombs away in 10 seconds. No flag. Not a fighter in sight. Glad that I missed them. But there must be fighters near, or we would have flak by now. the results. But from what I saw at interrogation, I judge it to be something like what Joshua did to Jericho. Oh, uh, excuse me, Joe. There's something I forgot to say to Major Stowe. Captain, you certainly deserve a medal. But what's more important, I didn't lose one single man on this mission. Yes, sir. Army 713. Over and out. Pat, if I seemed unconcerned when we picked you up, I, I had to have that information in a hurry. I surprised myself. I was feeling very feminine. I wanted somebody to care if I was alive or dead. But we're both scientists, aren't we? Mine is weather and yours is war, and we're both committed, so. Pat. I want to thank you for helping to save my life and the lives of my men. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. And where are you going? To London. Do my job from the desk. Oh. Well, then I guess from time to time you'll be sending me weather reports. Mostly foggy and cool, but occasional periods of warmth and sunshine. Well, then, on the first sunshiny day, perhaps I should come down and start paying you back some of that fortune I owe you. That sounds like a highly workable solution. Oh, Pat, I just realized something. It's a sunshiny day. rendezvous point by now. Here we are, seven there, sir. Two o'clock high. This is Bert 
dog leader. Your flying wing position, Wilson, so tighten up. Find your spot. Try to hold it this time. Red dog red. I'm on it. I'm on it. Hello, Ramrod leader. This is Bird Dog Troops checking in. Chris Robinson, with guest stars James MacArthur, James Callahan, Sammy Jackson, Patrick Wayne. Tonight's episode, The Outsider. Sandy, anything can happen. This isn't the first time and it won't be the last time that one of our guys accidentally hits another one. We just can't forget the whole thing, sir. I won't, Sergeant. I'll handle it. Right now, we've got to land this airplane. Sir. Oh, she's slipping. There, now if I can just hold that... Well, all, all this is 
one fantastic week. We got four on Monday, two on Tuesday, Wednesday, Jack Potter. We all got one except Wilson today. Major Templer, you're claiming you shot down two. Yeah, if that gun camera doesn't make me out a liar again. Okay, anyone confirm? I sure didn't see you get more than one myself. I only saw three go down, and one of them was mine. Sir, you confirm Mickler's 109? Uh, no, I didn't see his, but... All right, that's one confirm, one probable. Gabby, I saw you get yours. I got one myself. That's three confirm, one probable. Sir, how about mine? You still submitting a claim, Wilson? I know I got one. He jumped the colonel's plane. I, okay. I, I chased him away. Okay, boy. Anyone see it? Well, I saw him go after somebody. Someone must have seen it. He broke right in front of the 17s. Colonel Gallagher's own airplane. Ah, you were breaking the scoring column next time. Huh? I know I got him. I stuck on him right into those clouds. Clouds? Well, then you really didn't see him go down, Wilson. Listen, don't worry, kid. Maybe the gun camera films will show it, okay? Sure, that's it. Okay. Hey, Sandy, heard you had a little trouble. I'm glad you made it back all right. Oh, thank you, sir. Excuse me, excuse my ride. with Colonel Gallagher today? Yes, sir. I saw the jury that hit you. That's it. Did you see me get him? You did see me get him, didn't you? I was the one that chased him away. Get the jury, huh? You could confirm a hit, huh? Yeah, I'll confirm a hit on our aircraft. Yours? I was hoping I'd find the guy who belongs to this. It's 50 caliber. One of the slugs that nearly knocked us down. It's crippled us. Yeah, I'm sure you want to keep it as a souvenir. We'll see you around, Lieutenant. Sergeant, I tell you, I would handle this. Sir, I didn't exactly go looking for him. He had the guts to stop and ask me if I'd confirm a kill. If he was the one I saw, he probably saved your life driving that jury off. Sandy, I don't want this talked about. The relations between our bomber group and fighter group have been excellent. Now, I don't want anything to change that. Do you understand? Sir, I only thought... You're dismissed. Yes, sir. I'd like to have seen that pilot's face when Kamansky told him. Bert, I just don't understand it. Every intelligence report we received insisted that the refinery was right here, the very target we hit today. I want to see the film on the mission as soon as possible. Take me long to get ready, though. Um, about those plans we had for tonight. Uh, Gabby is. I told you it was okay if you wanted to bring Gabby along. The more the merrier. Uh, yeah, the thing is, see, he ran into a couple of gals he knows, and. A couple, you mean. Two. Well, you know how it is. Hey, what about tomorrow? Hey, one of these nights we'll get together and we'll drink us all the beer we can hold. Sure. Well, see ya.
We're approaching Castle Dorf now, General. You can see how heavy the flak was. I've had a lot of anti-aircraft since we were there two months ago, sir. Coming up on the IP now. Right in the target, but look at the size of those explosions, General. Just an ordinary drop. Well, it's obvious what you hit was no refinery. I don't get this, Joe. Intelligence says the fuel dump is in that target area. Might be in the area, sir, but it's certainly not by those buildings. You know, we didn't, we didn't get a very good look at the surrounding area. No, we sure didn't. General, may we run that again? What have we got in mind, Joe? I don't know, sir. I'd just like to get a closer look. I wonder, General, could I have permission to stand my group down a day? I'd like to run a photo recon mission over the area before I take the whole group back over that target again. Well, let me check with intelligence before I give you an answer. Captain Vincent, get me General Martinez, Chief Headquarters. Yes, sir. Captain, I... Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. General Pritchard calling General Martin and scramble the call, please. Now what can I do for you? I understand Colonel Gallagher is here. I have to talk to him. Oh, can you locate him for us? Yes, please, as soon as he arrives. Thank you. You're uh, Lieutenant Wilson, aren't you? Yeah. Well, Colonel Gallagher is in with the general and... Uh, Mind if I wait? No, not at all. Would you get us some coffee? Uh, no, please don't bother. Oh, it's no trouble at all. You're uh, working late tonight. Well, there is a war on, you know. Sure, but I, I hate to see a woman like you. I mean, I uh, hate to see a woman work too hard. Well, that's very nice of you to worry, Lieutenant, but... Well, I'll be getting off pretty soon. You uh, must be real tired of it. Going uh, right on home? No, I... Uh, I've got nothing special on if you uh, feel like having some dinner. Well, that's very kind of you, Lieutenant, but... Well, I, I already have a date. Oh, sure. I, I just thought if you had nothing on, I... Phyllis, what about General Martin? They're trying to locate him, sir. All right. What's this, P-51 gun cameras? Oh, yes, sir. I hope you don't mind. I'm running these other films. We had a small problem today, sir. I think that's mine. Great shooting. Great shooting, Zach. Those are our films. Who did that? That was Lieutenant Harley Wilson, sir. But that was you he hit. Yes, that was me. Zach, I thought you'd want to know about this. Well, uh, I'll have a nice long chat with Lieutenant Wilson. Well, I think you should. Yes, sir. I'm begging your pardon, General. But in all fairness, it wasn't too long ago that I knocked down one of our own P-51s by accident. At the time, they made quite a lot about it. This time, however, sir, I strongly recommend that we minimize the situation for the sake of the whole team. All right, Joe. Thank you, sir. General Pritchard's office. Oh, yes, sir. Will you hold? General, I have General Martin on the wire. 
All right. Colonel? Lieutenant? May I speak to you for a moment, sir? Well, Lieutenant, we're uh, just a bit busy right yes, now. Yes, I'll talk to you later, Wilson. I just wanted to say, sir, I, I found out it was me who hit the Colonel's aircraft today. Uh, we know that. You do? Lieutenant, I'm sure you know better than to open up on an enemy fighter moving between you and the formation. Yes, I do, sir, but he suddenly pulled up just as I was giving him a short burst. All right, Lieutenant, just don't let it happen again. I guarantee it, sir. Joe, I'm giving you a one-day delay for your photo recon mission. G2 will coordinate with you. Fine, General, thank you. Okay. Zach, I'm going to fly one of your 51s on tomorrow's recon mission myself. Good. I'll fly another. Let's see. We'll need uh, two men. I'll get some volunteers. Right. I'll be moving on. Roger, Bert. Uh, Colonel, Major, I, I, I'd like to volunteer for that mission. Well, I'll uh, tell you, Wilson. I feel it's the least I can do, Colonel, after, after what happened today. Well, you're not required to volunteer. Yes, sir, I do know that, but I, I want to do it. I really do. I mean, if it's, it's all right. All right, fine, Lieutenant. We certainly can't turn down a man with a spirit like that. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it. boxer every time if he doesn't get tagged you know murphy the guy won the wing welter title and he stands like this wide open his jaws out here go ahead sandy i didn't mean to interrupt i was finished lieutenant uh, we were just leaving we'll see you around yeah go on Captain, I didn't expect to find you sitting back here by your lonesome. Yes, Captain. Why do you look so lonesome when you're out with me? Good evening, Wilson. <laughs> Sir? You out on the prowl, Lieutenant? Well, you know. <laughs> Just a few hours from now, we really will be on the prowl. Better think about getting some sleep, don't you think? Yes, sir. You don't have to worry about me. Right. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. <laughs> How you doing tonight? Pretty busy, I see. Were you dressing me, sir? I am sorry. Must be going bonkers, and no wonder. Bonkers? What me mum calls batty. You must be new here. Oh, no, not really. I, I, I've been here a couple of months. Shot your share of Jerry, I expect. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, well, you see, uh, when you fly wing position, which I do... Uh, but when you fly wing position, you're, you're out here, and so you don't have much of a...
right blue. Ramrod blue. This is Lita. I think I've blown a jug. I'm on fire, Zach. Take him home. Take him home. Ramrod, this is blue. Bail out. Bail out. I'm going to put you in for a DFC. Settle for that.
Lieutenant Harley Wilson, yeah. the pride of the squadron. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You take it, buddy. You yeah, take Will. It. Hey, tell him what that usher said in church. What he said to that lady. Pardon me, pat him. This pie is occupied. <laughs> May I sew you to another sheet? Yeah. yeah. Get yourself another pie, Don. Sew him to another sheet, Wills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Hey, yes, back, sir. buddy. Hey, back. I, I just want to say I was sorry for yesterday. I, I was way out of line. Forget it. I, I understand. What you did today for this whole rotten war, Colonel Gallagher's, he's the greatest, you know. Yeah, he is. I just want to say thanks. Hey, Harley, these guys over here report as you're going to be famous, boy. Why, well, you go ahead, Lieutenant. It's your show. You deserve it. Lieutenant, I'm Steve Harkins. Bill Tolley. Mike Barnes. How are you? Pleasure, son. Public relations said we might find you over here. Nice to meet you. I, I've never been interviewed before. <laughs> Just relax, Lieutenant. It doesn't hurt much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Everyone, to the quietest and most courageous man in the 53rd. And the best pilot. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Well, say something. Come on. How's it feel? Uh, just great. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, I, uh, I feel as if... The whole world's my friend. <laughs> I don't know what else to say except... Well, I don't believe there's uh, such a thing as a, as a best pilot, if you know what I mean. What do you mean, Lieutenant? Well, landing in, in, in that field to pick up the Colonel, uh, lots of things could have gone wrong, and I was very lucky. Oh. <laughs> lucky? You were fantastic! <laughs> Right there, General. That's the area we bombed on yesterday's mission. It looks as if we didn't have any storage tanks there at all. They didn't. But you couldn't tell that unless you came down low. You sure couldn't. Now, that's where I began my sweep over the foothills to the south. Well, there are the tanks, plain as day. They weren't so plain, sir, from 20,000 feet up. That ravine is natural cover there. You'd never see them unless you were looking for them. General, that's about it. Well, gentlemen, I don't have to tell you how important it is that we put a dent in Jerry's fuel supply. That makes this target our number one priority. Joe, I'm going to give you every ship in the wing to bomb Kessel off again. And all the fighter cover we can muster. Yes, sir. And you see there, there was this hedgerow here, so, so I had to come in real high and then drop fast. And you said you were under attack by Jerry Fighters. Under attack? He was a sitting duck. Right out in the middle of a wide open field he was. You can't get any more exposed than that. And he had to sit there under fire waiting for the colonel to come running across from cover. And then somehow get into the cockpit. You know it's impossible. They had two, three good passes at him. All right, here's the standard foolish question. How does it feel to be a hero? Well, I don't think that's so foolish. I mean... Being what you would call a hero means a great hey, deal. Hey, Welcome back. <laughs> Isn't it Skipper? Nice Greetings. Nice to have you back. Happy nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> you really are right. I am now. <laughs> Boy, I wish I could get shot down. <laughs> hey, look, everybody. The Skipper's back. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Say, isn't he the man you rescued? Yeah, that's Colonel Gallagher. How's it feel to be alive, Colonel? Uh, at this <laughs> moment, I'd say pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 
you were saying. What? That becoming a hero matters. Oh, yes. You see, um, well, up until now, nobody's given me a chance to do anything but hold down the wing position. <laughs> and becoming a hero has changed all that? Yes, it has. Changed everything. Bet there's no sweat at all, eh, Colonel? What, in a P-51? Huh? <laughs> well, actually, that's the only time I did sweat, when I realized I wasn't in a solid 17. Ah. Ah. You know what P-51 in code means, don't Save you? the bomb. It also ah. means the Colonel bomb. Escort off the target today. Briefing's not for another hour. Go back to sleep, will you? You're really turning into an eager beaver, you know that? Makes it feel pretty good, doesn't it? Pretty sight. The jury's over. They're gonna throw everything they've got at us this time, Sandy. And another thing, you wingmen, hold your positions. Disobeying orders might turn you into a hero, but making a habit of it could get us all in some real trouble. Okay? Okay, let's hit it. Well, sir, I'm Major Temple. Uh, I know you were talking about me, sir. I wasn't talking about you directly. I was the one who disobeyed you. Forget it. But, sir, you, you don't understand. I... Forget it, Wilson. Now, we haven't got time to chew over each little incident. You've got a job to do today. Just go out and do it. Relax, boy. Well, it's a bombardier. PDI Senate, it's all yours. Roger.
This is Ramrod Leader. You'll never make it. You'll never make it. Wilson. Wilson, you don't have to take this kind of a gamble. We know what you can do. You've already shown us. It seems the only way, sir. I'm sorry, but to me it is the only way. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you for knowing. he goofed. Except perhaps when he did something heroic. Well, if that's the stuff heroes are made of, I want no part of it. Why, Phyllis? Don't you think his motives were pure and simple? Maybe, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I think we drove him to, all of us, into doing what he did. More people had just been kind to him. If they'd just gone out of their way to... Phyllis, nobody drove Wilson. Wilson drove himself. He was trying to become someone that people would notice. Unfortunately, this time he had to reach a little higher than he could go. Personally, I don't think this would be very much of a world if some of us didn't reach out. Let's go. Are you? It's awful quiet tonight. Has there been some bad news? Oh, nothing that different in this war. The pilot died. Oh, one of the lights I might have known? Lieutenant Harley Wilson, Agnes, fighter squadron. Wilson. Harley Wilson. It wasn't very big. Average looking. Oh, he's kind of alone. No. It's a pity. A lad dies, and I don't even remember him. Yeah. Oh, we will, Agnes. We will. Colonel Allen, 
Ask my radar officer to come in here. they are. I suppose the Yankees, the British, don't raid by daylight. How many? What are they doing? Can't be sure, sir. A radar just isn't that effective in this kind of weather. I don't think they'll bomb. They never do if they can't see the targets. I suppose if I took up a squadron of fighters... Colonel, you'd have to climb through 20,000 feet of that soup. I know. I know I'd lose all semblance of tactical unity. It isn't worth the risk. That's the all clear anyhow. Weather has turned them back. But they're up there! I guess it's a little theatrical, but I feel they are using my sky. And I hate them for it. Really, I'd like to see you, sir. Thank you. General? Boarded another mission, eh, Colonel? Well, sir, we all knew beforehand we may have to turn back because of bad weather. What if I told you that was never going to happen again? I'm sorry, General, I don't understand. Of course you don't. But you will, because you're going to be the guinea pig. Get in. Twelve o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Paul Burke. Also starring Frank Overton and Chris Robinson. With guest stars Burgess Meredith. Alf Chalim, Andrew Duggan, Robert Doyle. Tonight's episode, Back to the Drawing Board. so that you would have your answers before anybody had a chance to ask you any questions. I don't understand, sir. Answers to what? General? Oh. Colonel Gallagher, Dr. Michael Rink, and Sergeant Zemmler. Doctor? Sergeant? Colonel? General, may I have an explanation, sir? Dr. Rink is here with a team of engineers. I timed it so that they would arrive while your group was aloft and the base was quiet. His work is all top secret, Joe. I've had this section of the field put off limits. I want your men to keep their minds empty and their mouths closed. No speculation, no rumors, right? Well, yes, sir. But I'm sure it's no secret that something is going on here. No, but it's what we're doing that counts. I'd like to show it to you. Captain, your maintenance reports. You have more than half of my airplanes marked badly in need of repair. Huh? Eighteen of them, sir. Seven are very bad. Suppose I give you five days to work on them. What can you do? If I get the parts I need, I can put us in first-class condition. 
Well, this weather is defending us against enemy bombers, but it's also grounding us. The long-range forecast is bad for at least a week. So tear down everything you can fix in five days and go to work. Yes, sir. Hello, General. Dr. Rink. Colonel, how's the coffee? I hope you have a strong stomach, Doctor. I'm afraid I haven't got a strong anything by your standards. I don't know. When a man can work 36 hours without sleep, he's strong by anyone's standards. He always works like that. Wish I could. We'll be ready by midnight. Tomorrow we can bomb. A big one, huh? Let's hit them hard. Well, Doctor, we think that three aircraft would give us an adequate test. Three? Yes. We, that would limit the number of men who'll have to know what we're doing. Well, Dr. Rink, these are my pilots, Captain Clark and Major Rice. Sir, if we have this lousy weather tomorrow, I mean, do I understand we're going up into that soup? Oh, Major Rice, we need lousy weather for this. Fortunately, yes, we can count on a week of constant overcast on the continent. You fly a short run tomorrow. The marshalling yards are Durand. Of course, you men do realize that this is top secret. Now, tomorrow you'll be safeguarding and testing a really hot one. Dr. Rink now will tell you all you need to know. We have installed a BTO device on the airplane outside. BTO means bomb through overcast. And that, gentlemen, is what we are going to do accurately. Dr. Rink to check out on oxygen and bailout procedure? Yes, we're double checking. Yes, sir. I knew it. Amateur photographer. You want something, Sergeant? We don't need any distractions. Sir, you don't have to wear that yet. We're not high enough. It takes some um, getting used to. What is it, sir? Radar? Airborne radar. It's surprising, isn't it? It uh, paints a kind of a picture on that little screen. It's our job to interpret the picture. Here, look. See those large blips? That's the coast of France. And right there is the town of Deux Le Bain, the tin roofs and all. And further along, you see the shipyards. See, anything metal shows very brightly. It just takes a little practice to know what you're looking at. You mean we aim? We pick an aiming point from this? That's right. Does it work? Well, we'll soon know. And if it works as good as the experiments, we're going to change the shape of this wall. I think you better take over here, will you? Are you all right, sir? Roman, take over. Yeah, I'm all right. It's all right. It's all right, I... I'm very sick. You see, flying this doesn't agree with me. Navigator to pilot. Best I can figure, we'd be about 90 seconds from IP. Now approaching the Rhone by the Rocheville Road. Large. BTO to pilot. Negative on that. You're 30 seconds from IP. 30 seconds. We got a good return on that last checkpoint. One of those clouds, those crowd fires be swarming all over us. BTO to pilot. Bombs away in 30 seconds. Roger, BTO. We're ready. I hope he's right. This is like bombing into a pile of blankets. Yes. 15 seconds. Huh. 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 Huh.
Hello, Mitzi. Hello, Mike. Anything new on radar? Nothing on radar, sir. Report from our listening post in Dula Bar a short while ago. Oh, enemy aircraft? Nothing they could identify. A weather scout, most likely, looking for a hole in the clouds. Not very much we can do about it, anyhow. Have a pleasant afternoon, sir. Thank you. Headquarters, Captain Sheila. Yes? What? Well, you must be mistaken. We had no radar reading and only one weather scout. Sir, he says there was a bombing raid. They bombed to Ronde. This is Colonel Elland. What are you talking about? They did bomb. Yes. Yes, all right. Get off the phone. It must have been a mistake. Get me, Captain Schmidt. Go see what you can pick up on radar. Schmidt, how many fighters can we scramble? All right, roll out everything that is not being repaired. If it is five, it's five! At once! Excuse me, darling. Fighters, leaders, to all units. Above the overcast, at 12,000 feet, on course 276. If anyone sees enemy bombers, report at once. The rest of us will join you. Otherwise, assemble on me as fast as you can. You have to catch them before they get back to England. Might as leader out. told that he took a physical all right but it's a kind of a heart condition that doesn't show up unless the doctor knows what he's looking for rink must have known i wonder why he assumed the risk sir well we're trying to re-establish regular heart rhythm with medication now he's on oxygen it eases the strain will he make it chances are he will but doctor did he make any statement about why he took the chance of going with us no. No, he didn't. He just wanted to see it work, that's all. Do we know if he hit the target? Not yet. Well, I sure hope we did, for his sake. youth groups. He kept me out of reform school, got me scholarships. When he went to work for the Signal Corps, I volunteered. He's about the only family I ever had. It looks like you're going to be the teacher now. Colonel Gallagher wants to see you. He's picked half a dozen bombardiers to start PTO training tomorrow morning. Oh, and uh, we get the target on the nose this morning. 80% destruction. It might do the docs some good to know that. You better would. But I'll stay here if you like. If he wakes up, I'll be sure and tell him. You know, uh, I didn't think I was going to like you. Yeah, well. This equipment is still experimental and primitive. Nevertheless, yesterday proved that we can bomb by radar and under conditions which make it difficult or impossible for the enemy to get at us with either flak or fighters. Now, the next step is for you to learn to read this airborne radar. 
Sergeant Zemner, it's all yours. Thanks. Now, this is an aerial photograph of the town of Rocheville and the factory complex there. Now, this, this is how it looks on a radar scope. Now, any metal object, a railroad track, corrugated roof, will give you a good bounce, good response. I keep getting sort of a flare at about five o'clock. Comes and goes. Wind on the lake service, ignore it. This must be my aiming point. Roger, factory loops. Bombay doors are open. Bombs away in 30 seconds. No, I don't understand it. Radar. Yes, we have a reading. One blip and a lot of mush. Colonel Erland, scramble all available fighter aircraft immediately. Yes, I know. You are going to go up and try to find them. Well, I don't know. Tell fire control to guess at 20,000 feet and open fire. Nobody can attack B-17s piecemeal with six fighters, that's all. B-17s have too much armament. Three more days and I'll have to group back to strength. The rest is up to the weather. No one in his right mind would fly in this kind of weather. That'll be all. Yes, sir. How can they be so accurate? Is someone giving them signals from the ground? Sir, maybe my training influences my thinking, but I can't help wondering. It's one bright blip I saw. Maybe they are directing their bombs by radar. We have radar. We can't find them. Problem is different. They may even be a step ahead of us. But, sir, if it is by radar, I think there is a way to catch up. Yesterday, Rocheville. Today, the synthetic rubber plant at Himstein. Tomorrow, Rocheville again at the cloud cover holds. I'm proud of you, boy. Well, I learned it all from you. Anyway, I guess the best news of all is that you're okay. I suppose it is a triumph for me. If only I could feel it. Well, the other guys all feel it. They named the plane after you. What? Rings Raider. Oh, only they spell it R-A-I-D-A-R. Rings Raider. It's Kamansky's idea. <laughs> hey, 
That is an honor, isn't it? Well, we ought to christen her. Why don't you get a dram of christening fluid and we'll celebrate, Ray? Oh, no. No christening fluid. Oh, the watchdog snarled. You made me the watchdog, remember? There's no watchdog like a young watchdog. All right, Raymond, all right. I'll stay dry and you stay young and you hang on to your dedication. Well, Dr. Rink, feeling better? Good as ever. Good. I watched the bombers landing. Another good day? Yes, indeed. Oh, they sent up some flak today, but they missed us by a city block. Four raids in four days and not a single loss to enemy action. Doesn't it leave you empty, Colonel? Uh, not to be able to see the effects of your work? Not to be able to feel your own personal strength behind these blows that are struck? I know, Doctor, it doesn't. To me, destruction has never been a very pretty sight. The destruction of evil? The humbling of the bully? To me, it's magnificent. It is, huh? Well, I'm sorry if I seem bloodthirsty. Perhaps my cup runneth too strong, or I'm trying to drink it too fast. Yeah, I'm a master technician. My mind is all right, but my body's not too good. I've never marched in a parade before. And somehow I feel out of step. Will you be taking off again tomorrow? Yes, the group will. They're going to hit the Zerpth and Major Rice will lead the mission. I wish you could go with him. I really do. Give me your present reading. Yes, yes, hold on. Station five, where do you have the formation now? Fire control. Colonel Allen, stand by. Do you think we have them this time? Thank you. 14,500? 14,500. Altitude, 14500. Zero, zero. Yes? 
I see. Thank you. Your theory was right. Triangulation on their bombing device. Radar tracking radar. Actually, they're making it easy for us. Yes? Another one down? Yes? Gadget back. Sergeant Zemmler's wounded. Dr. Rink will have to check it out. I'm still waiting for 16 of my airplanes. right on us, less than a minute from the IP. We took all the evasive action that we had time for. We'd lose them for a second, and they'd find us again. General, they tracked us right through a 35-degree turn. Six down before bombs away, four more during the rally, then a ditching into the channel, and one destroyed landing. A third of my group, and all by flak. Never saw any fighters coming or going. Flat coming up through 14,000 feet of overcast and tracking us like it had eyes. Man, I thought with this BTO thing that we were supposed to have them, but they had us today. Or well, maybe they have something new. But, Bob, we've had our troubles before. We have trouble like this again, and we're not going to last very long. <laughs> You're okay. They're getting ready for you. Where's Dr. Rink? Uh, he, uh, he's busy. How do you feel, Sergeant? Not too great, sir. Well, we're just about ready for you in surgery. No, no wait. Wait a minute. So much I gotta think. Sandy, the way that flak was following us, that it must have had something to do with radar. It's the only way they could have known where to keep on firing. Tell Dr. Rink. They must have zeroed in on Rink's radar. Well, 
Well, Doctor, I'm very sorry that you consider this an imposition. All I'm asking you to do, sir, is to help us. Now, that is part of our job, isn't it? My job was to install the BTO device. Just that and nothing more. Sergeant, did you tell the doctor about Sergeant Zemler's idea? Sergeant Zemler wondered if somehow the Jerry gun zeroed in on the BTO radar gear. What difference can it make how they did it? The fact is, they did it, and they destroyed us. Is it possible that Zemler is right? Suppose I tell you he is, and then you take action based on that information. Wouldn't I then be held responsible? This is not an intellectual exercise, Doctor. Can they or can they not lock into our airborne radar? Of course they can. So here lies the 918th, hoist on its own petard. This is General Britt. Get me General Pritchard at Pine Tree and scramble it. You're excused for now, Doctor, but I'm going to have to ask you to remain on the base. We may have to take this whole thing back to the drawing board. Doctor. One more thing about Sergeant Zemler. All the time you were in the hospital, he was over there holding your hand. I think he'd like to know why you haven't even asked what happened. Sergeant! To Sir, Zemler was hit in the face today. He may lose his eyes. I think this man ought to know about it. Pilot to BTO. We're in the critical area now. Is everything back there okay? I'm getting real good bounces, sir. We're approaching Rocheville now. Pilot to crew. I want everybody to watch for flak and report the first burst that we have had it. I suppose they think that we were only lucky yesterday. This will prove to them we are not joking. Station 5 is course 196, and so do we. You're reading. Course 196. Course 196. Altitude 13500. DD 3852. And you may fire when ready. BTO, switch off the radar gear. Well, it's a crew. Hang on, here we go. on trying. They are playing games with us, Shira. They are playing Yankee games. They take this round, perhaps we take the next. General, it seems to me we've proven two things here today. One, they do lock on to our airborne radar. They can't find us once we switch it off. And two, the BTO operator can't possibly line up on any target with anything less than a five-minute bomb run. Now, surely you can get your group into position without radar. Well, I can get my group to the IP, all right. But a five-minute bomb run with radar on, sir, and they're going to knock us right out of the sky. Well, Joe, General Pritchard knows what you proved today, and you know his order. If the cloud cover holds tomorrow, you bomb Himstead. Yes, sir. 
Hello, Ray. Dr. Rink. I'm glad you came. The uh, colonel gave him some time off, Ray. Sandy tell you I've been working on some new ideas? I've been thinking about installing a tuner to pick up the frequency. Or some kind of transmission to jam the receivers. Yeah, well, we're trying. See, any effective answer is going to take time. So you just keep on thinking about it, will you? All right. Now, I'll come back tonight. And then, if you have any good ideas, we'll talk them over. All right, sir. Promise. We'll see you later. All right. So long, Sandy. It's all right, Sandy. It's only metal cup. I'll get it. Huh? Nothing but that's in. Wait a minute. Raymond? SN. Sir? SN, the element tin. It bounces. Of course, it's elemental. My dear Raymond, it's elemental. All right, you shut up. Keep hacking. Only one more mess all to go. We're going to fly to the IP by normal navigation, no radar. I'm only going to allow you four minutes to zero in on the target after we turn on the BTO. Now, we learned yesterday that it takes the Germans a little better than two minutes to zero in on us. So at worst, the flak shouldn't be any more than normally intense. Now, Dr. Rink here is going to tell you something about their accuracy. Doctor? Thank you. When Colonel Gallagher fires his red and yellow flares, the squadron leaders will commence dumping these boxes of metal chaff from their aeroplanes behind him. The readings that the enemy gets from this chaff, as I call it, will confuse him. Not for long, perhaps, but uh, long enough. He won't know what to fire at. That's all. Schmidt, Colonel Erland, I'm going to scramble the group today. Get all available aircraft ready for action. Mine first. No, there is nothing on the radar yet. But there is a report from the listening post. We know they're up there somewhere. I'm going to go up and find them. The rest can assemble on me. I bet your promotion they're going to play hide and seek again. BTO to pilot. BTO ready, sir. Navigator to pilot. On the IP. Turn now. Co-pilot to BTO. Switch on your gear. Roger. Radar on, sir. Yes, yes, we have them. Get a fix on it quickly. Radar? Yes, we have them. Listen quickly. Colonel Erland is taking off. Get a radio contact with him and keep this line open. I will give you readings as they develop. You transmit to him. Come right three degrees, sir. Right three degrees. Hold that course, sir. I'm getting a good, clear response now. Co-pilot to waste. Stand by back there. Minute 55, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2 minutes. Fire the flares. Pilot to waste. Drop the chaff.
altitude, one four five zero zero. Course, two zero zero. No, wait. It's that. No, no, wait. Radar. Yes, yes, we're getting it. I don't know. Can it be our fighters? Call Colonel Airland. Call him in the clear. Fire control. Try 24,000 feet. There's something wrong with our radar. Something is wrong. How do you like that, sir? Sky full of scientific tin. Flag ahead. away in 10 seconds. You're right on, right on. Switch off. Four, three, two, one. Bombs away. I don't know. I, I think we've lost them entirely and now we can't. Fighter, but keep your eyes open. What is it? I can't help wondering what they'll think they hit when they see all that tin on the ground back there. Yeah, the last two stragglers, right? That means we only lost one. That wasn't due to flak. Good day, huh? The day you get back is a good day. Yeah, I'd say the day that it was especially good. Look, Sandy, would you tell Dr. Rink that I think I can figure out a tuner we can install to scan for their frequency? Sure, I'll tell him. what it look like? Canteen cup? <laughs> well, it's possible, Doctor, that no one will ever strike the last blow in a fight like this. But, as they say, the man who believes is right will keep on swinging. Well, the Germans will keep on swinging. Count on that. We're going to have to come up with something better than scraps of tin. Well, we will. Someone will. Some youngster, perhaps. Which reminds me, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'm overdue to visit someone at the hospital. I gotta join you, Doctor. Oh, Joe. If you feel sure that that fighter pilot identified the airplane and changed the markings in the name. Yes, sir. <laughs> 